photograph I thought it had been brought up to the past Once you know you can never go back I gotta take it on the other side Centuries of hooded man to me The cemetery where I marry the sea Change of things never change my mind I gotta take it on the other side Take it on the other side Take it on Take it on Well, we're down on Henry Street near the Manhattan Bridge where we're gonna try to do a little uh, window shopping here on the little gallery strip on Henry Street. We're gonna run in here to no gallery. And we're gonna look at, what's the title of the show? Hope? Cope. Stand love and okay, well, we came in and saw his show. Now, this is all work by Japanese artists. So I'm gonna follow the list, which starts here with this piece. And what was the subtitle of the show? Uh, Narrative Strategies in Japanese Contemporary Figurative Painting. Narrative Strategies in Japanese Contemporary Painting. Curated by Solven Loven. <laughs> okay, so we've got our little figure here. We're gonna scoot down. Yueo Kagoshima, Protector of the House, 2019. I gotta show you the back of that one. Okay, well, I was talking to. Casey, he said that this guy has been around in the New York scene for many years, kind of eccentric, uh, and I guess was in Greater New York show at PS1 this year. Yeah, solo at the New Museum. And solo at the New Museum. And we're going to look at the back. Put his pass. Gosh, that's great. Okay, so this was shown at PS1. No, it wasn't. Oh, he's he just, got a he tag just, on there. He just put his Tag on. Okay. Okay, that's nice. Finished March 30th, 2019. Okay. All right, thank you. Also, Iwao Kigoshima. Iwao Kigoshima. This is more recent, so this is 2021. Wire Mixed Media on Paper. So we've got some drawings with photos collaged in there. He told me there are uh, photos taken out of American magazines of the Hiroshima bombing. Oh boy. Okay. Kind of a heavy piece. And that's um, 24 by 24, approximately. And I would say that it probably sticks out about 18 inches from the wall. Let's look at this piece. Ko Izuki. Okay, so this is a selection of small pieces. It looks like it's on canvas and canvas board. And I kind of like the way that uh, I've installed this on a corner like this. This is oil, acrylic, do we know? Oil and oil. Okay. This is kind of an intriguing wall. So mix the two artists, that's Ahmad Maham on the end. Ahmad Maham? Yeah. Okay, do we have a title for this piece? Okay, that's always easy. Looks like oil. I like the uh, scruffiness of this, the urgency. Uh, that one's called Transfer and Pigment Laminate. 
transfer and pigment. Okay. Uh, and he also did the middle piece, not the middle piece, but to the left of the middle. Uh, called, this one here? Yeah, called People on the Go. You know, I'm seeing that uh, Sven has kind of picked um, people that reflect his interest in people like Bosch and uh, some of the other northern Baroque uh, kind of fantasy. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what you call it, horror, horror artists. Yeah, I mean, the original idea he approached me on was uh, Japanese painters that were focusing, focusing on grotesque imagery and kind of developed into a more intelligent conversation. So these other threes are, are by the same artist? Um, the other three, uh, they kind of have a fresco vibe going. But right. Like Emi Mizu, Mizukami. Emi Mizukami, okay, so this looks like there's a little transfer drawings in there or something. Yeah, it's like, um, it's like a polymer mixed with sand. You know, and I'm thinking that this also makes me think of the French artist Fautrer, who was uh, a big kind of post-war French artist who was working with a lot of plaster and uh, built-up surfaces. Okay, let's look at that. Waiting for a gray day. Great. Great, great day. Okay. Uh, yeah, I like the surface. Makes me think of Antonio Tepe's too a little bit. And then there's this piece. I think these are actually coloristically they're very nice, and then they've got this kind of uh, interesting figures, kind of sketched in, drawn in. And I can see that this one has got some spray paint. So that's a nice wall. It's a model. Do we have a title? Um, that piece is titled Bone Three Man Exclamation Point Bird Exclamation Point Tiger Exclamation Point. Bone Man Tiger. I can sort of see the images there. We got a little narrative. On a rice bag. And tell me about the two drawings here. Um, surprisingly, those drawings have been extremely popular uh, considering their imagery. Uh, Shogo Shimizu. Uh, Shimizu. Um, Shomo Shimizu? Shogo Shimitsu, okay. Well, this looks like uh, kind of classic surrealism in a certain way, although I think that the um, the handling is kind of uh, brutal. I like the fact that they were ripped out of sketchbooks. Okay. Thanks for the narration, Casey. <laughs> Do the best I can. <laughs> okay, so what was the title of the show again? Cope. Cope. I have two more Iwa pieces in the back here. In my way. All right, let's look at the ones in the back. This one's, I was trying to fit it in the front there, but it just didn't fit in curatorially. But this is an interesting piece that yeah, it's interesting nice. both the uh, front, the top, the sides, the bottom, and even the back is really interesting, too. We've got our chopsticks stuck in there. We've got part of a, an American passport. Somebody's Sumi brush. Big one. Are you going to show us the back? Thank you. Okay, yeah, why should the back be uh, any less interesting than the front? Anyway, Kogoshimi, Shima. All right, nice. He has a nickname that a lot of people. And this like. is the other one that we were going to look at. That's a was a gift to the curator Sven Lovin. Um, it's just a paper piece that Sven has, and we just kind of uh, archive tape uh, stuck it to the wall. Nice. Uh, so. To Sven, hello. <laughs> Thank you for Cole. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Well, oh, it's Cope. Here at No Gallery on Henry Street. I'm gonna 
on to King's Leap. Here's Alex. And take a look at... Okay, what do we got here? A show by Tom Kohler. Brass Duck, Head Book and Rendezvous. The painting show. And, uh, okay, so I like the way <laughs> the paintings are too big for the wall and they uh, extend out into the doorway. So this is Zombie Princess Wild Horses 2021 oil on canvas 66 by 84 inches. And I'm thinking that uh, this work by Tom kind of relates to a uh, theme that uh, Laura Hopman used when she curated a show at the uh, Museum of Modern Art uh, seven or eight years ago titled The Forever Now. And what it was about was um, people collecting images from the internet and that somehow, because all of these things have been put into the cloud, all the images have been put into the cloud, people could virtually pull references and images from any time in history and put them together. And so that somehow created a new paradigm, a new view of reality and uh, the whole, it's like the uh, group collective unconscious, something like that. The collective unconscious of, of images, except it's all floating around in the cloud. We miss you, Sergeant Knott. Okay, and I could probably get in here and find out a little more about some of these uh, images. This could be something from a Marvel comic book movie. Sergeant Knott, our badass military guy, and okay, so this is interesting. It's like an image of an image of an image that's been photoshopped. Um, I've recently been doing some research on Hito Stero and her concept of, you know, she wrote a book called In Defense of the, the Poor Image. And she spends a lot of time talking about how the internet and computers and cell phones have degraded a lot of images, but how that's not a particularly bad thing. And in a certain way, it's kind of a um, redo of Walter Benjamin's idea of the work of art in the age of mechanical reproductions, but she goes into the whole aspect of how computers have affected this and I'm saying that one of the big things that Tom is doing is juxtaposing images that would be about as far apart as you could find um, conceptually, visually. It's titled Kit Mitten Sinister Figure 2021 60 by 84 So you probably couldn't get farther apart than the... It's like the cute little paws of a kitten that looks like it's being shampooed or something. And this... Gosh, I guess that's probably somebody's patio decoration for Halloween done in a nice kind of tropical mauve violet into the pea green lime green end of things. Also, I was thinking that uh, Tom is using some kind of thick stretches on here. Maybe uh, make the works a little more pronounced as paintings, as objects. Let's see if we can slide into the back room.
This is Christ 2020. So this is the oldest piece in the show. Oil and burlap on wood panel, 24 by 24. Well, I kind of like this. It's rugged. I, I like the texture. I like the way that he's built up the layers of paint. And this is more of a stray painting rather than having your images in little rectangles floating on a white ground. This image fills up the picture plane here. It's kind of like his uh, palette. Okay, so that was a run through of Tom Kohler, Brass Duck, Head Bookend Rendezvous here at Kings Leap. We're gonna go next door and try to finish things off. Is that Tom? Hi, Tom. <laughs> All right, now we're gonna go next door to public access. Oh, and gosh, we're gonna get. We're gonna take a walk down of Christopher Wool East Broadway breakdown. Photographs. Well, I'll read a little bit from the press release. The pictures comprising East Broadway Breakdown were taken by Christopher Wool between 1994 and 95 as he walked between his Chinatown home and studio on the Lower East Side near Avenue C. More than 25 years have passed. Although we might retrace his path, does that world exist? The New York of today is somewhere else. Wool moved here in the early 1970s when the city was both exciting and in real decline. Falling apart, nearly bankrupt. Sometimes the bad news is the good news. Life is affordable for artists, writers, and musicians. Okay. Yeah, the past is always better somehow. Okay, some of these look very familiar. Uh, when I was driving the delivery truck for Utrecht, I uh, dropped off supplies at Christopher's studio. So I'm going to Chatham Square over a uh, little Buddhist temple at the time. And I was always impressed with this work. I don't know, but I would say that these are probably old. These look, uh, I'm looking at the cars and stuff. These look like a lot of these are from maybe the 80s. And uh, you could probably still walk two or three blocks away from here and find a lot of these features still intact. Okay. Well, yes, we were listening to the uh, gallery director talking about getting Christopher Wool to uh, put the show together. I'm also kind of liking the fact that these are old digital prints on uh, cheap paper. Makes it even more ephemeral. Oh gosh. Well, and there aren't too many spaces like this anymore because they've moved in and uh, thrown up luxury towers in these places. This might be cheer. Okay, who can tell me what the year and model of that car is? Looks like a Chevrolet 1978. Uh,
Excuse me. I go by that place all the time. Restaurants. Fine lighting. You can like this. Share, subscribe, hook it up to all your social media sites, and you can leave your thoughts, ideas, comments, criticisms, suggestions below. And as always, we just ask you to say, Thank you, Kate. How long, how long will I slide? Separate my sides. I don't. I don't believe it's bad. my throat is all I ever. <laughs> Thank you. I'm going to wait a couple of times.